Does that sound like it's working okay? Okay. I'm always nervous when Todd's not here because Todd can go back there and he can just kind of adjust everything real fast. And me, I have no idea what to do. I, I look at that thing and I, I want to curl up in a fetal position and suck my thumb when I look at the soundboard. That's just beyond me. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to be starting in Matthew chapter 12. I don't know, I'm just the one teaching, so I've, I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> yes, sir, good to see you. All right, so Wednesday, Friday, or something else, we're going to talk about the day Jesus was crucified, try to figure it out. Um, I've talked about this some before. We'll see how many people I have convinced over the last six years. So, show of hands, how many people think Jesus was crucified on a Wednesday? Good Baptists would say Jesus is crucified on a Wednesday. Okay, now how many would say traditionally Jesus was crucified on Friday? Oh, okay, and now how many don't understand the question so far? <laughs> and some people are like, you're tricking us, we just know it already, so we're just not even going to answer. You're right. So we're going we're gonna to keep your, keep your thumbs mobile because we're going to be looking at a number of portions of Scripture as we look at this. <coughs> and... Uh, So this is, this is a subject that sparks a little bit of controversy. Generally, it is more fun than it is uh, aggressive. Although I do know some people that are pretty aggressive when it comes to this type of thing. And uh, So traditionally and historically, Christians have largely, until maybe the last 70, 80, 100 years, have traditionally thought that Jesus was crucified on a Friday. That if you're to go to a Catholic church, they're going to say Jesus was crucified on a Friday. You know, that's why they have Good Friday. Um, you're also going to have some in more of the Protestant. A lot of your Protestants are going to say Jesus was crucified on a Friday. Now, I would speculate, I'm going to speculate because I can't find anything biblically how a person could come to a Wednesday view of the crucifixion. No offense to our trusted uh, traditional Baptist. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, don't, I have no idea how they do it, but I think it's more reactionary that since the Catholics believe Jesus was crucified on a, Wednesday, on a Friday, well, we're going to pick a different day, and I think somebody got the math wrong. And, but you go to most independent Baptist churches, uh, and they're going to hammer on the fact that Jesus was not crucified on a Friday. He was crucified on a Wednesday. And I'm going to contend that it was something else. Um, I remember when I was a teenager, I, uh, when I first got saved, I, I assumed it was a Friday because that's just anywhere you go in the world. You know, Good Friday, Jesus was crucified on a Friday. That's just the way it is. Then I got into a Baptist church, and they started saying, well, Jesus was crucified on a Wednesday. I was like, oh, well, the Catholics believe it was Friday, so it's got to be a Wednesday. Why would, why would you think it was anything else? Why would you agree with the Catholics? And so I believed it was Wednesday. And then I get into Bible college, and they're teaching that it's Wednesday. And, you know, I'm hanging from the chandeliers. Yeah, that's right, those ignorant Catholics that don't know anything. And uh, I remember I was going into the prisons to preach and stuff like that my first year of Bible college. And I forget if it was Easter time or if it was something else, but in one of my messages, I got on the idea of Jesus being crucified on a Wednesday. And, you know, a bunch of the guys were just like, what? How do you figure that out? And I, so I drew it up on the board, and as I'm counting the days and working through this, I, I, I get stumped. And then I try to work through it again. I get stumped again, and I'm like, well, you're just going to have to trust me on this. It was, it was a Wednesday. And I didn't think much about it. And then I think it was later in the time that I was in 
Bible school, I was back home visiting, and there was a newer family there that had been there for a while. I think they were newer at the time. I, I, I'm pretty sure. And um, he comes up to me, and it, it, I think it was his crusade. This was, this was his soapbox uh, that Jesus was crucified on a Thursday. And I thought, well, that's cute, and, <laughs> you know, you got your own idea, and, well, everybody knows it was a Wednesday, and, but if that's what you want to believe, that's fine type of attitude. Well, the more I thought about it over the years, I was kind of like, you know, I, I don't really see a Wednesday. I don't really see a Friday. Maybe I'll look into this Thursday thing and see about it. And so I did, and I, I became convinced. So right up front, I'm just going to tell you where we're going. I'm going to try to prove to you that Jesus was crucified on a Thursday. Now, you say, does it really matter? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not going to affect your salvation. It's not going to affect whether you're in the rapture. It's not going to affect anything. It's just something that I find really interesting, especially this time of the year, to look at and to consider. Um, so we're going to look at it a little bit today and just kind of get into this. Uh, so let's look here at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40, because we need to kind of establish some of this criteria of how long Jesus was supposed to be in the grave. So notice here, Matthew chapter 12, verse number 40, for as Jonas, or Jonah, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, so how long is Jesus going to be in the grave after his death? Three days and three nights. Okay, so let's kind of get into, so those who hold the Wednesday view claim that Jesus had to be in the ground for three 24-hour days. So 24 hours, 24 hours, 24 hours. That, that's the argument that I've always heard. It has to be three 24-hour days. Those who take the Friday view say, well, you, you just count the part of a day. So he would have been in part of the day Friday, all day Saturday, part of the day Sunday. And the truth of the matter is, on both of those, there is an element of truth to it. Jesus did have to be three days, three nights in the heart of the earth, and they did. And you can count the partial day on Sunday because Jesus was resurrected on the third day, not after the third day. So, so there is a little bit of truth for both of those, and that's what makes either of these views convincing for the people that believe them. So there's a little bit of truth there, but let's look at some of these passages. We're in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27, and we're just going to kind of look at a few of the details regarding the day of the crucifixion. Matthew chapter 27. And we're going to start with verse number 50. Just to get the context. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Jesus... When he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So what just happened there? Jesus died. Okay, so now what's next? He's going to go in the grave. Okay, so now let's look over to verse number 57. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Uh, let's drop down to verse number 62. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. So now notice what he's the day here. So whatever day Jesus was crucified, this is the following day. And it's the day after the preparation. Okay, so now I'm going to bring these details together in just a moment, so just keep that in mind. Whatever day Jesus was crucified, this is the day following. The day Jesus was crucified on was the preparation. This is the day following the preparation the next day here, that they go, that the Pharisees go to Pilate. Now go over to chapter 28 and verse 1. Okay, now let's just keep this in mind here. In the end of the Sabbath, 
As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as the snow. And then drop down, uh, verse 5, the angel answered and said unto them, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. So what do we have here? We have the preparation is the day that Jesus was crucified. Then you have the day after the preparation. And now we have this detail here in chapter 28 that it's the end of the Sabbath. Now what day is the Sabbath on? Saturday is the Sabbath. So now this is the end of the Sabbath as it begins to dawn toward the first day of the week. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Okay, so we have the crucifixion day. The next day, we have this Sabbath day, and we have Sunday, the day that he's resurrected. Okay, so everybody clear as mud on that. Okay, we got some details here. Let's go to Mark chapter 15. Okay, Mark chapter 15. And you may want to even put a bookmark there because that's where we're going to be this morning in the morning service. Just, you know, people that don't come to Sunday school, don't, they don't get the, these added things. <laughs> uh, but chapter 15, verse number 42. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, now watch this, that is the day before the Sabbath. Okay. Now, here's another detail. So Jesus was crucified on the preparation day because that's the day that Joseph of Arimathea goes in to beg the body of Jesus, right? So we have the preparation, okay? Now, the next day is what day? Saturday, the Sabbath, right? Now, when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that's the day Jesus was crucified on, that is the day before the Sabbath, okay? So now, this is really seeming, seeming, okay, key word, this is really seeming like a Friday crucifixion, right? Because if Jesus crucified on the preparation, the next day is the Passover, I mean, there's the Sabbath, then what do you have? It really seems like a Friday crucifixion, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into that in just a moment, just be aware. But let's, verse 43, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he had, were already dead. And calling unto the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. When they knew it, the centurion, uh, of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Um, let's see here, what verses? That, that's, that's enough. Let's go to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke 23, verse 52. Okay, so Luke 23, verse 52. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And when the day of the preparation and the Sabbath drew on... And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. So again, Jesus was crucified on the preparation. The next day is the Sabbath. Verse 55, the women also, which came with him from the sepulcher, followed after, and behold, the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rest the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So we have them resting the Sabbath day. Now, chapter 24, verse 1 says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came. Okay? So again, we have the preparation, we have the Sabbath, we have Sunday being the first day of the week, the day that Jesus resurrected. So again, this is, this is looking like, if you just take these details, I could really see where somebody could come up with a Friday crucifixion, because, I mean, it just it looks like it. Let's go to Luke cha uh, John chapter 19.
Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat. Now, what day is this taking place when Pilate is bringing Jesus to the crowds? This is just prior to the crucifixion, but what day is this taking place on? This is crucifixion day. This is the preparation, remember? Okay? Now, sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation. Notice this. Notice this detail. This is so important. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Okay, so now we're getting a new detail here. So now in, in the Jewish culture, every Friday was the preparation for the Sabbath. We'll talk more about this in just a moment, but it was the preparation for the Sabbath. Here specifically, we're getting a detail that the day Jesus was crucified on was the preparation, but it was the preparation for the Passover. Now this is an interesting detail. This is an important detail. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. Okay? So now notice here in your notes, the gospel accounts seem to indicate that he may have been crucified on a Friday. The Sabbath is Saturday. The day prior to the Sabbath is the preparation for the Sabbath. The preparation was a time of preparing everything they would need so as to not need to work on the Sabbath day. So you couldn't work on the Sabbath day. In fact, God's law even forbade uh, making f cooking food on the Sabbath day. You couldn't do it. You couldn't start a fire or anything like that and make any food. So if you wanted hot food and you didn't want cold cuts on the Sabbath day, you had to prepare it on uh, you had to prepare it on Friday, the day of the preparation, give extra feed to the cattle and everything like that. That way, on the next day, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Okay, That's for the Sabbath, the regular weekly Sabbath. Now let's look back to Matthew chapter 28 for a moment. We're going to go back and forth through the Gospels quite a bit, so... And, and, of course, we just read this a moment ago, but just for sake of a refresher in case you forgot. Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as the snow. And... For fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. So again, this is the end of the Sabbath as it's dawning toward the first day of the week. So as the sun is coming up on Sunday, Sabbath is past, and they're coming to the sepulcher on Sunday. Mark chapter 16 again. Mark chapter 16, verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, okay, so again, when is the Sabbath? Saturday. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone? From, before, from the door of the sepulcher. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw the young man, saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garments. And they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Now drop down to verse number 9. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. Okay, now that's an important detail there. Because up to this point, all the passages that we've looked at said that he was already resurrected and they were finding the tomb empty on the first day of the week. Okay, so I, technically, if that was all that you had, you could assume that he had even resurrected on a Saturday and they're finding the tomb empty in the morning. But here it says 
Jesus was risen early the first day of the week. So we know from this verse, now it's interesting, this is one of the verses they, don't, they think shouldn't be in the Bible. <laughs> I think that's a pretty important detail that we know, because this, this is the only verse that specifically says it was the first day of the week that Jesus resurrected. So I'd say that's a pretty important, pretty important verse to have there. So no, notice here, these passages show us that Jesus rose the first day of the week, Sunday, the day following the Sabbath, okay? So we have the preparation, we have the Sabbath, we have the first day of the week, and Jesus resurrected. So thus far, it seems that Jesus was crucified on a Friday. Now, we know from these passages that Jesus was crucified on the preparation. The resurrection took place on the third day. While it was early and yet dark, it was also Sunday, the first day of the week. So, closed case. That's, that's what it seems like. Now, here's where we're going to throw the monkey wrench in. Let's go to Luke. Luke 24. If only things were as simple as they seemed. <laughs> this, happens, this happens to me a lot. I'll, I'll think I got the idea of something, and it's like, man, this just seems so simple. And some people are like, hey, did you see this verse? Man, you defl deflated my, my balloon or my ego or whatever because I thought I had this figured out. So 24, verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week. Okay, now these... These are going to be some of the most important details that we see in this passage. Now, upon the first day of the week, which day of the week is that? Sunday, okay? Very, and what day did Jesus resurrect on? Sunday, very good. Very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, drop down to verse number 19. Now, what's happening here is Jesus is, you have two of the disciples on the road to, to Emmaus. Jesus appears to them and is having a Bible study with them, going through all the law and the prophets, uh, showing himself through there, and they're still not understanding that this is Jesus walking with them. They're not, they're depressed because Jesus died. Now, watch this. Verse 19. And he said to them, what things? They, they, you know, they're, they're asking, don't, don't you... He asked why you're depressed. They said, don't you know what's been going on? So he says, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and wonder, uh, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, now watch this. This is, this is the phrase. Beside all this, today is the phrase third day, what's that next word? Since these things were done. Now drop down to verse 46. And said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Okay. So Jesus is walking with these, let me do this first. How many of you remember board games? Anybody still play board games? And if anybody remembers what a board game is anymore, you know, most of the time you bring up games and people are thinking something digital, right? So, and you have all, you have these little pegs that if they get on the floor, you step on them and they hurt really bad. But you get them on the board and you roll the dice and it says you can move three spaces. Which spaces do you count? Do you count the space that you're on to count three, or do you go three spaces after? You go three spaces after. Okay? Now let me do another analogy. So it's Sunday. Now on Wednesday, when we have church again, how many days will it have been since we had church? Three days. Three days after. The word since just simply means after. I know that seems... Uh, kind of obvious, but I figured when I was just reading that sense, it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to go fishing next Tuesday. Well, does that mean in two days, or does that mean a week from Tuesday? You know, I guess it just kind of depends on who you ask, right? Because next Tuesday could be the next one coming, or next Tuesday could be the one after the week that you're presently in. 
You know, so if you're going to make reservations, just tell them the date that you're coming. <laughs> Otherwise, you could be greatly disappointed. So, I looked it up just to be on the safe side. Webster's 1913 dictionary, the very first word in the definition, after. Okay, I got the right idea for sure. So if this is three days after Jesus was crucified, so Jesus was crucified on a particular day, we have three days after, and on that third day is the day that he rose, now we're getting pretty particular as to what day Jesus resurrected. So let's look at the next paragraph. Important details. Important details. The Bible has a lot more details about things than we give it credit for sometimes, I think. Um, so notice, if Jesus was crucified on Friday, he would have only been in the ground two nights in order to rise the first day of the week, or he would have to rise on Monday, which is the first day of the week, which is not the first day of the week, but the second. See that? So if we go Friday, and I count two days since that, three days since that, we have Saturday, Sunday, you'd have to rise on the third day. So that's a problem. So a Friday crucifixion just doesn't work. So let's look. Was it Wednesday or something else? So like I said at the very beginning, I have no idea, no idea whatsoever where anybody came up with a Wednesday crucifixion other than just to react against Roman Catholicism. It's the only thing I can figure. Can't figure out anything in the Bible that says it. Um, it, it, just, it, it doesn't match anything in the Bible. I can't figure it out. So I'm just going to give a brief explanation here on Wednesday. So Luke 24 tells us twice that he rose on the third day. When we look at these verses, uh, verse number 7 and verse number 46 tells us that he rose on the third day. And then verifies that the first day of the week, Sunday, is that third day in chapter 24, verse 1, and in chapter 24, verse Verse 21, now knowing that a Sunday resurrection is not possible by counting the days from Wednesday, according to the Wednesday view, advocates Jesus would have been resurrected from the dead either just before or just after 6 p.m. on Saturday night. That's, that's the argument. That's, every, that, that's the argument that I was brought up with, is that, it, you know, if he... As long as he res resurrects just before or just after, you can count it. I'm not sure how that works because if Jesus resurrected just before 6 p.m. on Saturday night, it would be the seventh day of the week and not the first. It would still be the Sabbath. So that's a problem. And if Jesus resurrected just after 6 p.m. on Saturday night, it would be the first day of the week. But Jesus would have been in the tomb four nights instead of three. And Sunday would be the fourth day since the crucifixion, not the third. <laughs> That's a major problem. So if the Wednesday view is correct, Jesus would have been resurrected on Saturday early in the morning, not the first day of the week. Well, that's not what the Bible says. I mean, if you just count the days, right? Because if you have Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, then you have Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday being the third day that he rose on, and it just doesn't work. And I, so, like I said, I, I racked my brain for years trying to figure out how that works, and it just it doesn't work. Now, if you want to believe something else, that's fine. If you want to hold the Wednesday view, that's fine. It doesn't really matter to me. Now, remember that Jesus had to be taken down from the cross because it was the day of preparation, meaning that a Sabbath was the next day. Okay? Now, that, that is an important detail. It is a Sabbath, not the Sabbath. Also, Jesus was risen the day after a Sabbath. Let's go to Matthew 21. So Matthew chapter 21, this would be the beginning, I guess you could say, of the Passover week, or you could say it was the... Um, beginning of Passion Week, however you want to define that. What happens on Palm Sunday? 
What, what, what happened biblically on Palm Sunday? Jesus rides into Jerusalem, right? He's on a donkey, and the people go berserk. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Chapter 21, verse 6. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strewed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Okay, so this is the triumphal entry. Now, this takes place at the beginning of Passover week. Okay, this is, this is a pretty significant event because what's going on at this particular time is really a fulfillment of prophecy, but the people don't see it that way. There's more to what's going on here that the people are experiencing. So let's go back to Exodus chapter 12, and this is where the Passover is first introduced to us. So we're going to be in Exodus chapter 12, and here at this point when it's being first spoken, the Lord's giving commands concerning future years, future observances, how they are to observe this and what's supposed to take place. So Exodus chapter 12, and notice verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall Make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye, Now watch this, verse 6. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So what is God's instruction here? On the 10th day, you're supposed to bring the lamb and you're supposed to keep it up meaning you're supposed to feed it, you're supposed to examine it, you're supposed to watch it, you're supposed to protect it. Because these lambs that are going to be offered have to be without spot and without blemish. They can't have any broken bones, they can't have scratches, they can't have any pokes, they can't get into a fight with another animal. I mean, they have to be perfect. And they have to be examined to make sure that whole time, people looking to make sure that nothing, there's no scarring or anything wrong with these lambs. No ticks or anything like that on them. And then on the 14th day is when it's supposed to be killed at the even time. Okay? So this is important detail. So you have the 10th. Comes in on the 10th. Then 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. Okay? So Jesus comes into the town on Sunday. I'm just making sure my count's right. That would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> I've done this every day this week just to make sure that I didn't miss my count somewhere. So Jesus comes into Jerusalem on Sunday. Now what's happening there is they would bring the lambs from Bethlehem. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, which, which is perfect, right? So they bring the lambs from Bethlehem into the city. Now, as they, now in years prior, and what's actually going on here, because you have to understand, there are millions of people in Jerusalem. So not everybody is seeing Jesus. You know how it is in a crowd or a parade. You got the main attraction way down here where you can't even see it. And everybody starts cheering because it's the main attraction. And that just kind of funnel, filters down to the rest of the crowd as they're all standing there. These people down here have no idea what's going on. It's just, well, everybody down here is doing it. So there must be something pretty exciting. Well, that's exactly what's going on here. Well, as the priest would come into Jerusalem and as they're walking up into the city with that lamb, the people would begin to line up in the streets and begin to shout out, 
Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, because they are doing it in anticipation of the time when the Messiah would come. And that's what they're looking for. And so when Jesus gets on this donkey and he's riding in, his disciples begin to cry out, Hosanna in the highest. This kind of just ignites the crowd to start chanting this and shouting this out. So it's pretty remarkable, and that's why the Pharisees come and like, what are you guys doing? Stop! Where's the lamb? And they didn't know that the lamb was standing right in front of them. So that's what's going on here. So Jesus comes into town on the 10th. And then it's interesting, he is in town every single day leading up to his crucifixion. He comes into town on Monday, comes into town on Tuesday, comes into town on Wednesday, and that's when he did his Olivet Discourse. And then on Thursday, he comes back into town because he's drugging as he is going before all these trials very early in the morning. And so that would have been Thursday. So now notice here, the lamb is set aside on the 10th day for four days. It's killed on the 14th day. The day following Passover begins the seven-day feast of unleavened bread. Now, let's go to Leviticus. This is an important detail here. Leviticus, chapter 23. I just might finish this lesson. That would be great. Leviticus 23, verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. So a holy convocation, what's that? That's a holy assembly. This is a special time when Israel is commanded to gather together. He says, verse 5, and the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. On the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Now watch this. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. So notice, you have the Passover. The next day is a day that they're not allowed to do any work, any labor. Servile work would be your typical chores and all that stuff. What is that? That's a Sabbath. And we're going to see this in just a moment. This is a Sabbath. The scripture calls it that. So now notice here in your notes. The first day of the feast is the holy day in which no work is to be done. It's a Sabbath. Now, if Sunday was the 10th and the lamb was killed the 14th, what day would that be? It would be Thursday. Now, let's go to John 19. I think this is the last, yeah, this is the last passage we need to go to. John 19, this helps us understand what's going on. Because we're going to see how Leviticus is being applied right here. Because remember, whatever day Jesus was crucified on, the gospel accounts make it clear that it was the preparation. Then, the ladies come the first day of the week, when Jesus was resurrected, after the Sabbath. Okay? Okay? So now let's notice right here what's going on. Chapter 19 of John, drop down to verse number 30. When Jesus therefore had, am I in the right place? I hope so. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So what happened just there? He died. Now watch, verse 31. The Jews therefore, because it was what? The preparation... Now, remember that expression, the preparation, is in reference to a Sabbath. Now watch. Because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. So notice there, we have a Sabbath day. Just mentioned. Again, it almost seems like a Friday, but now watch this. 
For that Sabbath day was in what? A high day. Why would John have to make special mention of that if that was the regular Sabbath? Wouldn't people already know that? And it's, this isn't the first time John mentions a Sabbath day. But this is a special Sabbath. So now, according to Leviticus, you have the Passover. The day after the Passover is another assembly that's supposed to take place, which is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And you're to do no work on that day. And then, on the seventh day, it's supposed to be another convocation, another assembly, and on that day, you're supposed to do no servile work therein. Now, this is really interesting. Because theoretically, technically, here, most years, you are going to have three Sabbaths within a week's time. I mean, that's like vacation for, for the nation of Israel. So what's taking place is you have Thursday, crucifixion, because from Sunday, you know, Sunday's the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, Jesus crucified. It's the day of the preparation. So you have Friday is a Sabbath. It's a high day. It's a special day. Then you have the regular weekly Sabbath on Saturday, and then you have the ladies coming the first day of the week. Now, if it was Wednesday, then Thursday would have been a high Sabbath, a high day, which means that Friday would have been the preparation for the following Sabbath. Why didn't they go Friday to anoint the body of Jesus? Why did they wait until the first day of the week? Because they had to wait, it says, until the Sabbath was passed. And so there was two Sabbaths consecutive that prevented them from being able to go. Now, let's finish up our notes here. This is how we can account for the seeming contradiction of the Sabbaths. If he was crucified on Thursday, being the Passover, then Friday would be the high Sabbath. That, then there would be a regular weekly Sabbath, which would have taken place on Saturday. There would be two Sabbaths in a row. The day he was crucified was the preparation for the high day Sabbath. The next day, Friday, the 16th, uh, was a preparation for the weekly Sabbath. Both Thursday and Friday were Sabbath preparation days. A Thursday crucifixion puts him in the tomb Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Remember what Jesus says, three days and three nights. So there has to be three periods of day, three periods of night. Didn't say he had to be in there three 24-hour days. In fact, the scripture even makes it abundantly clear he wasn't in there three 24-hour days because he rose on the third day, not after the third day. Okay? So he would be in there Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. He's in the tomb Friday, all day, a Sabbath. Saturday, all day, a Sabbath. And he rose early the first day of the week, Sunday, which would have been technically, according to Jewish calculations, any time after 6 p.m. Saturday night but we know it was early in the morning as the sun was coming up. So Wednesday and Friday views of the crucifixion create contradictions and do not fulfill the, Im the imagery of the Passover. The Thursday view of the crucifixion uh, is consistent with all the scriptures as far as I'm concerned. Any questions on that? Anybody want to give me an argument against that? Okay, that's okay. <laughs> all right, let's pray, and uh, we'll get ready for the next service. Father, thank you for your goodness to us, and thank you for... Um, just time to be able to look at your word, and uh, I always find it fascinating, all the details that you have, and if we just search for them. And so we're just thankful for the riches of your word. Pray that you bless now as we prepare for the next hour. And I pray that if there's somebody here today that is not saved, I pray that they would see their need for a Savior, and they would be drawn to you. Pray that you bless now in Jesus' name. Amen.